you know what time it is let's go so hey guys welcome back to my corner of the internet today we're doing not this braids i split color 613 into a half and two quarters 27 into a half and two quarters and then i split color four into a half and two quarters and that's going to help me to have different ratios when i'm blending the hair so I can have different kinds of tones and highlights in the braids when they all come out. Half, colour 27, one quarter, colour 24, one quarter, 613. This is half, 613, one quarter, 27, one quarter, colour 4. This is half, colour 4, one quarter, 613, one quarter, one quarter, 27. Today I'm just going to show you how to blend. And the best way to blend is basically splitting the hair up exactly where you see a big chunk of hair and then flipping it around the other way and doing that over and over again until you literally see no more chunks of colour unless that's what you want. working with right now over here it's majority 27 next i'm gonna do majority 613 see what's happening i might still mix this more though i think i probably will but let's just move on so now i'm blending half color 613 a quarter color 27 and a quarter color four so basically the majority color in this is going to be 613 once again just placing one on top of the other and flipping it around each time after I separate it to get the colors as blended as possible. This is majority 27. This is majority 613. So a slight difference, but very slight. So I forgot to press record when I started mixing this majority colour for, but it's literally the same thing. Just separating it where there's a big chunk of the same colour like this. Taking it apart and putting it back the other way around just to make sure it's extra mixed. Find another place where there's more colour. Separate it apart back the other way. Definitely much ashier than the rest, like ashy brown I mean. And she ran up in here. So up top we have majority color four. In the middle we have majority color six one three, and at the bottom we have majority color twenty seven. Now I have still got more hair left that I'm going to blend evenly, but as you can see, you can see some tonal differences here. Even though the difference is quite subtle, it's very much present. So yeah, four six one three twenty seven. This one has an even amount of all three colours, but I'm not going to blend them as well. I think I might just stop here because I think it'll be nice to have like some block colours in it rather than it all being like almost perfectly blended. So I'm going to stop right here for this one. But yeah, here is the combo for an even amount of 61324. No, 61327 in colour 4. I love it. I wanted to have even more depth of colour in it just to see if I can play around with it. So I started to mix double colours. So 4 and 27, 6 and 3 and 27, 4 and 6 and 3, etc. So here's the first one. And here we have all three next to each other. Definitely less dimension than the ones that I blended up first, but I think they'll add nice highlights and lowlights to the individual braids. So I'm gonna add these in piece by piece amongst the bigger ones. Now let's get to braiding. I got edge control or edge, mommy's edge wax. 
this Ducks Indian Hemp. Um, Shea Moisture Braid Up Conditioning Gel. You don't really need this, but I just like to have it when my fingers get dry when I'm braiding. Same with the Ducks, to be honest, and this edge control, which I use for the base of the braids. And then I've just got like all my combs or whatever as well. Some clips, in case I need these. You guys know how braids go anyway, so. And every once in a while, I'll just add in this color by itself because that's the color I want to show the most. And it was so much easier to do the braids with this because I was able to prepare it beforehand and just pick off each piece of hair. Without this, it would have taken 10 times longer and it already took me two days. So I'd say get something like this that you can hang loads of pieces of hair off so that you can just grab them each time you need to braid. One thing I will definitely say is you need two mirrors if you want to make your lines as straight as possible. I'm not too fussed about the hair at the back of my head being like completely straight. Um, and you'll see that when I lift it up a bit, like my lines aren't perfect, but nearer the front, I become a bit more like intent on it. But as you can see, I have a mirror behind me and this mirror in my hand is what I'm using to see the back of my head. And then I have a really long, well, prong, <laughs> any kind of prong will do. <laughs> to just basically line it and get it as perfect as you want. But like I said, it's not that deep if it's not perfect it's because it's going to be covered by every other braid on your head. So I separate it with my hands at first because there's no reason to stress about using a comb right now. Once again, no one's going to see that. Um, and I'm going to zoom in in a sec so that you can see how to braid it properly. So I get my gel and I've done three already. So this is like an easier shot. I'm going to do this loads of times, guys, so don't worry about it. I'll go into different angles as well. So we're going to start off with the braid. Braiding once, braiding twice, braiding three times, braiding a fourth time. And then with my right hand, I grab the first piece of hair. I hold it taut between my fingers and I put it in between my index and my thumb on my left hand. And then I braid four times. So I always braid it and leave it in my left hand before I grab the next one. That's just because I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, you can probably do the other way around. Grab the second piece of hair in between my index finger and my thumb, braiding once, twice, three times. Or was that twice? That's the third time. <laughs> and that's the fourth time. Grabbing my next piece of hair, holding it taut, and literally making a loop at the top so that I can grab it with my other hand. And braiding once, twice, Get rid of that hair two times, three times, sorry, three, sis cannot count, three times, four times. <laughs> uh, grabbing my third piece of hair, I think now. So each braid that I did, I um, added five pieces of hair and I cut my extensions into two. So it was expression that I used. So basically it's like all the way down to my bum, this length. The more that you add, the longer it gets. And you don't need to add that much hair at a time anyway. I just literally pinch it and that's how much hair I add each time. If anything, the hair I add at first is the smallest part. But aside from that, they were pretty much the same size. And yeah, when I've added the fifth piece of hair, I just braid down a tiny bit and then I'm able to flip it over and then just braid normally. Just adding a bit more of the sheer moisture as I'm reaching the end of my hair, just to really blend it in. You can also use the Dax at this point, or even edge control, just some kind of cream to really hold it in. I feel like your braids really get stiff at the bottom and they lose their flow when the hairdresser or when you haven't braided as far down as you possibly could. The further down you braid, the better. Sometimes if the hair at the front was quite small, I would braid it twice before adding the second piece of hair rather than braiding it four times. But if it was quite thick, I would braid it four times. And yeah, it's the same thing over and over again. If you know how to do braids, 
with knots you can definitely do braids without knots and it will actually make it easier for you to understand how to do like garner weave or feeding braids too so yeah just the same thing over and over again one two three four add a piece of hair one two three four add a piece of hair one two three four braids everywhere <laughs> okay that's enough Now please do forgive the quality of this clip because you know I film on my phone so I accidentally um, filmed this part in slow motion. <laughs> so the quality is extremely compromised but like I said I want you guys to get some different angles. So here's probably like I don't know maybe five hours in or something. Um, and yeah here I am braiding from the back obviously at this point I really can't see anything I'm just going off what I can imagine my hair looks like so you can actually see more than I could see at the time. Each braid I did was from a different bundle, so I would do a braid that was from the Majority 613 bundle, and the next one would be from the Majority 27 bundle, and the next one would be from the Equally Blended bundle, and I would add in one of the pieces from the double blends as well. So I would do like a Majority 613 bundle in braid, and then I would add like the black and white one, just like a, as like a wild card. I would add the golden one as like a wild card in there just to have a different highlight in every single braid and to make sure I used all the different blends equally. I hope you can understand what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Despite the quality, it's pretty simple. The, um, the lines aren't perfect, but they're straight enough. And that's actually all you need. And we are back with quality. Thank God. looking at it now that pretty is actually very ugly <laughs> I don't know why I chose to film that one make sure you pinch real tight at the front because this is the part that's going to be seen and most of us do have those breaker chairs at the front I can testify to that <laughs> so hold on for dear life with these because you'll see that my braid did actually slip a tiny bit I didn't rectify it, but um, maybe I added too much gel, so be wary of that too. It might make it a bit more slippery. Thank you. 
when I finish every braid, I hold it from the top of my, um, well, from top of the braid, and then I run my finger down it just to kind of get rid of the kinks because sometimes when you do braids, they can become like a bit, I don't know, bumpy. So I like to I like hold my finger, as you can see, and just like pull it all the way down with tension, squeezing the braid to get rid of any kinks. The next day I decided that I was going to um, make my braids wavy. I kind of like them more wavy than straight nowadays. Um, I just like them to have a bit more body, to look a bit more boho, as some would say. There's my dad in the corner. Hey, dad. Um, but yeah, I basically now I've just braided my braids afterwards and I put them in hot water because I like them to be a bit more wavy. Um, it didn't even come out as wiggly as I wanted it to or as wavy as I wanted it to, but um, better than straight, in my opinion, especially for the colour. It's giving me boho, so I had to channel that to the best of my ability. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, not straight, just kind of wiggly, and that's what I like. And if you don't like it, go ahead and don't do it. But that's my preference. So now I'm just going to put some um, braid sheen spray. This is for my scalp to kind of relieve tension on my scalp, to moisturize it, um, to help it to smell nice as well, like my braids. When I'm going out like on an everyday basis, or when I would, <laughs> Back in the day, I would always spray this on my hair, especially when it's wiggly as well. I would add the mousse. I always see people putting mousse on the top of their head, but I don't feel like that's the best for my hair texture. I'm not trying to make my hair revert inside these braids, so I just put them on the braids instead. But if you want to put it on your actual head, you go ahead and do that. It's your life. Also, after I put it in hot water, I did blow dry it a lot too, just to speed up um, the drying process. Shout out to Inches, a wonderful, wonderful hair oil. Yeah, then I was just up in here decorating my braids. Like, I do love a cheeky bead. I love a shell. I love a ring. I'm just sewing this curvy shell onto my, um, onto my braid. I think I sewed like maybe two or three. But what I tend to do is sew more when as time goes by because I just get like, oh, I don't know, bored. So I'll just like sew a random shell into my hair. And here's the final look. Don't know why I'm shouting, but here's the final look. Here's how it looks in natural lighting outside. I chose the best bush that I could find <laughs> given the time that I had to do so. There's my sister making sure that I look half decent. Thank you for that. And you're about to see what they look like in artificial lighting. A lot more yellow. But I'm still a fan. I think I prefer it in natural lighting more than um, artificial lighting, but I thought, why not show you both? So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Now time to speak to me. Lovely. <laughs> okay guys, I think I'm finally done. Welcome to my voice, my morning voice, my morning face. How are you? Do you like my hair? Do you like it? It took me about two days to do my hair all together, um, but I kind of spread it out. So like I washed my hair on Friday, I started braiding it on Saturday, finished it on Sunday, then I put in hot water on Monday because there's no need to like try and squeeze it all into one day. Just take your time. I hope you actually end up doing this hairstyle, guys. I mean, I've always been scared of doing bright colors like this because I never thought that it suited me or well, that I would just like it against my skin tone. But I will say, I think I like it in real life more than like on camera when it comes to the colour at least. But yeah, what do you think? Stunning. Shout out to my friend for getting me this. You know who you are all the way from Singapore. You know what I'm saying? This is really, really cute. It's from this place called Olive Ankara, I think. I like it. Nice Ankara scarf. Ooh, let me try and do a ponytail. I mean, look at it. When Jesus say yes, you know Beyonce, nobody can say no. <laughs> She goes, I'm not worried about a thing. Where's my hair done? Okay. Let's try like a high ponytail. We'll say though, my edges are um, on probation. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really do, um, ah, I don't really do high ponies too much. Most of the time when I'm styling my hair, I'll just leave it down most of the time. 
Ah, you see, this is why I don't do high ponytails. My edges, the little that I have left. Ooh. I feel like it makes me look like I'm like, I want to say 30 years old, but you know how like older women, they just have like nice hair. I don't know how to describe it, but I think this is a really nice color. It's just giving me, she's older. She's not 21, maybe she's 29. I'm in love with myself. Thank you for probably at this point considering whether you should do blonde knotless braids. And I'm here to tell you that yes, you should, because they're stunning. Proud of me. Do you like my spot? She's so cute. Okay, I'm going now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no way, no way. Thank you.